let's come to in a place of silence shifting our focus to the soul And we connect with each other, recognizing this, each other's souls, connecting with light and love, and will to good. We visualize the group centers emphasizing the group heart center and we connect with the centers of the new group of world servers. And we visualize the triangle humanity hierarchy Shambhala And we visualize the circle of people gathering from around the world, joining the webinar. And we honor the sacredness of the collective space that we're creating now, preparing to start the webinar. So we're uh, we ready. Okay. So and we start broadcast. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen only mode. everyone good morning good afternoon good evening welcome welcome to our gathering of celebrating the cancer solar festival coming together today in a circle my name is Alexander Ilchuk and I written you on behalf of the 2025 Initiative Coordination Group. And before we start our webinar, let's have a moment of alignment.
so focus within your soul Realize yourself connected within the world network of light. See members of the new group of old servers joining this gathering today from around the world and we link with each other with light and love and will to good and we expand our circle further connecting with the worldwide group whose members are present and working in all the parts of the world consciously or unconsciously working for the good of humanity assisting in its evolution Bring the focus to humanity, linking with its needs and the current phase in evolution. Now we bring our collective focus upward, linking with the spiritual hierarchy of the planet, connecting with the heart center of the hierarchy, the Christ. Together we say the mantra of the new group of world servers. May the power of the one life pour through the group of all true servers. May the love of the one soul characterize the lives of all who seek to aid the great ones. May we fulfill our part in the one work through self-forgetfulness, harmlessness, and the right speech. Now we bring our collective focus back to our gathering, to our circle, linking in the heart center of our circle. Oops. Oops. 
so today we have a special guest, very dear friend of mine, and I think many of yours, Tuya Robbins from Finland. Hi, Tuya. Hi, everybody. <laughs> it's really good to hear you. <laughs> and you too. <laughs> um, I don't really, I think, don't need to introduce you. And those of you who don't know Tuya, you can read your uh, bio or the announcement of the webinar. I uh, just want to say uh, like a short anecdote about preparing to do this webinar. When um, Tuya and I we were uh, deciding and negotiating about the day for the webinar, uh, <laughs> Tuya suggested let's have it on July uh, on June thirty uh, first. <laughs> and I said like, Tuya, do you mean like the thirties or July first? Like no no June thirty first. <laughs> like but there is no such a date. I said like really okay. So let's let's have them like on June thirties. And then this uh, I said like but you know Tuya. There is a really nice uh, old Soviet movie, like it's a musical, which has been called July 31st, or sorry, June 31st, <laughs> June 31st. And it was a movie about traveling time and about uh, magicians and about Marilyn coming to the future. And it was such a beautiful movie. And I told to her about it. And she said, yes, yes, I knew that, like, let's do it June 31st. So knowingly or unknowingly, but Today is June 31st, <laughs> especially for, for all of us and for Tuya. So, <laughs> thank you, Tuya, for joining us, and thank you for thank being such a wonderful soul. <laughs> thank you, Sasha. <laughs> Same to you. It is fantastic, 31st of June, <laughs> today. <laughs> okay. So, I will make you a presenter that you could show your screen. Okay. Um, and I need to put that. And just to make sure that I made your computer a uh, presenter, not Michael. Yes, it's your Okay. Computer, so Did I come on? Okay, Not yet, I sh but it's, it's in a minute. Uh huh. Where? What do I have to do? Uh, am I on? Do you see my screen? Not yet. It says on Not air, showing screen. Yet. I am on. Now it's, yes, it is here. Okay. Very good. So, again, from my end, hello. Where is yours, Tuya? <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Sasha. And thank you for the whole Initiative 2025 group. It is a privilege for me and also for Michael because we are sitting here in Finland in our temple. Uh, and we are going to show for those who might not know where the Finland is. So we are here far north and around here where you see my arrow. We are sitting with Michael. And uh, anyway, I have been uh, very, very uh, um, touched by and very inwardly proud about your work, what you are doing. It is fantastic. Also, very many uh, gratitude kisses to the whole Fifth Ray Ashram who has been implementing this fantastic uh, means for us to be connected around the world uh, so cheap nowadays that we all can be gathering and that's why these kind of groups can exist at the moment. So here again, we are very far north. So we are between the 60 and 70 degrees. And uh, uh, maybe all of you know <laughs> where the Finland is. But anyway, I was thinking that I show you still 
uh, our map and here is Helsinki, our capital city, and we are somewhere there, just uh, one millimeter away from Helsinki from the map. Also, this is our flag. We have the colors blue and white, and this uh, relates us to Sirius very strongly. We ha have here in our temple the Sirius festivals every year, which are one of the main points uh, when we think about the spiritual year. So here am I, taken last year after the conference, and this is our logo. I am expressing, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, hopefully, <coughs> I'm very sorry. We have been swimming the whole day with my grandchildren. <laughs> so this is uh, our group here in Finland, which is called the Northern Light Society. So I represent these few groups, which I'm going to announce. The Seven Ray Institute, the University of the Seven Rays, the Moria Federation, Esoteric Schools of Meditation, and also the Blue Rose Sisterhood. And at the moment, this uh, Global Triangles Initiative that I'm going to talk in the end of the talk a little bit more. So we are a group which is very dedicated to hierarchy and to the reappearance. This is our main focus, and all the groups whom I have been meeting and people around the world who are doing this work is really near my heart. These are a few photos from our temple. I just run them rather quickly. So you can just have some feeling. We change our themes according to the moment of the spiritual year and we have uh, some special um, along with the all full moon work we do some other special things what we have been doing in our little place so if you ever think about going to the over the arctic circle please come and visit us and inform your coming. It would be nice to meet you. So we have a lot of this kind of ceremonial manifesting uh, services and meditations, rituals. Yes, Christmas is coming. Can you believe it? Not in half a year again. And this is our chair of the master. Yes, so th this was a little go through uh, in our place. And we are talking in our temple at the moment. But now we go ahead with our theme. So now we are in the energies of uh, cancer. And full moon is very near. I think it is about one and a half days from now. So in that sense, the energies of cancer are very strong. When we think about the work for all of us, all the disciples of the, of the world who has come at this time in vast, vast numbers, we are focusing and hopefully increasingly more and more of the aspirants about uh, the coming one. The soul living, which is related to this um, triangle living, when we think about that the triangle uh, is always related to the soul and in symbolism the square to the personality, in that sense the a triangle formation carries the light and it fits so well to the cancer theme because the uh, theme of the cancer or the key words for ca cancer can be said that I built the lighted house and therein dwell. So in that sense when we think about the higher energies of cancer is always about the soul. 
the seventh ray is strong in cancer and the manifesting power. So the, in that sense, we have the power to manifest soul living during these times of the energies of cancer. It is also interesting to realize that when we think about the interlocking energies, those um, increasing and transforming energies which are uh, pouring now through the whole system, thinking about the cosmic Christ, they come into our uh, system, uh, they stimulate and energize every part, even in our solar system. And they evolve, evoke then the conscious response from the conscious beings, which are the planetary gods. Because their whole system is already adequate for those energies. But the question is now for us, these unconscious parts who we are. And we who even have been built from the unconscious matter. It seems interesting that Moses said it requires earth and water to make a living soul. And when we think about zodiac, we have the Cancer and uh, Capricorn opposing each other. So in that sense, it is only one sign. We should always, whatever sign we are ever studying, we should always study the opposing sign, but yet even further we should study the whole cross that those particular signs are uh, in question. These uh, uh, two signs, the earth energy from Capricorn and the water energy from, from Cancer, they are both building signs and they are in one sense, both of them they are coming forth signs of the living soul in matter aspect. They both express the divine birth in different ways. Uh, in Cancer we see the, the portal where the soul is coming in, into incarnation, and uh, in one sense the Capricorn is the portal that, uh, that we can go by uh, or we pass from the earthly lives. So, coronation of the matter is very deep and very esoteric occult um, work. It is uh, the whole reason why we are here. In that sense, when we think about cancer, it, and, and sometimes it is overlooked, that when we talk about the cancer, the deepest impulse in that is to become uh, to serve the lower lives. It is like the solar angel in us is making this service that we would be coronated and uh, or crowned. And so it is the whole story of cancer that through cancer this deep love is pouring in that sense to yearn to uplift the lower lives. And that is in that mass of uh, mass intent, intention of the work which is behind the cancer. But when we are in a uh, in normal way looking the cancer, we are focusing upon the material aspect and the mother aspect. But behind that, when we are able to see, is this great deep yearning to serve. So here we have this uh, wonderful image by Yofra. Who, who has been catching several things and sev several interesting symbols, which we cannot study in this sense because we, we should study this more and, and put more uh, time. But we have there behind where the cancer is trying to reach, we have the moon. And moon is the ruler for cancer that we are focusing in our talk at this, this time. Uh, the cancer hierarchy is uh, unco unconscious in, in this deep way here 
down the earth, but it is very conscious in its highest position. Because we can say that um, the cancer hierarchy, when we think about the cosmic physical plane, is uh, in its uh, highest position because it's on the verge of uh, just going into the uh, cosmic astral plane. So this is uh, uh, liberated, uh, almost liberated hierarchy. And then cancer hierarchy is working via the intuitive plane, via the uh, uh, hierarchy, the fifth uh, creative hierarchy, which is then governed by um, Capricorn. So here we see the interplane, the cancer and the Capricorn. Um, and then let us have this symbol here, this box, which is chest. And chest we have also in our chest. So we will play with this word chest further on. So let us keep that in mind. And here we have this very uh, mundane way of looking the cancer, which is hanging into all kinds of material, uh, material things. So now when we talk about the square, this is actually the image of Kala Chakra Mandala, but within that, as we can see, we have the square. So the square symbolizes this whole cosmic physical plane. It symbolizes the darkness, so from cosmic sense, our cosmic physical plane is also the darkened place, the darkened square, where the soul is then manifesting itself. This manifestation, which um, comes through the seventh ray, is the deepest and uh, the work of the soul, how the means, how the soul is able to manifest the heaven. So let us keep that there in the highest plane where Shambhala exists. We have uh, that great symbol, what the old, old sages and, and the wise, wise uh, enlightened ones have been symbolized in this great Kala Chakra symbolism. One of the major objectives of our planetary logos is to transform the etheric body of our planet Earth from a pattern of squares into a pattern of triangles. So when we look at this, here we see this um, cutting cross that we have this four triangles already within it. The square represents naturally the elemental nature of the personality and the triangle representative the soul and even the spirit. Here we have this um, symbolism of the spirit when we talk about Kala Chakra. Cancer is usually associated with matter and with the square. It is, after all, the fourth sign of the zodiac, and the square is fourfold. In old uh, mystic, um, uh, Christian mystics, they were telling about the four corners, four corners of truth. So all of our manifestation is standing on four truth. And that then relates us to the symbolism of the um, Taurus, which has four legs, that whenever we see the uh, Taurus or the ox um, in, in um, Hindu mythology, and you see how it is standing, if it is standing with four legs, with four truths, then it is the highest spiritual life lived on earth. But the less legs the uh, Taurus has or the cow has, 
the less spiritual life is lived upon the earth. So here we have the same symbolism than these four truths. So here we can mention about that about the triangles when we think about how uh, the different types of uh, the triangle work is done. We divide them into the energy force and centers. And via the planetary triplicities, we have these the triangles of force working. Via the constellations, we have the triangles of energy working. And then the triangles itself, the centers, are related to planetary and human. And here, this is the family image for all of us. But let us again look how we see all of these triangles, the chakric triangles, how the energy is distributed into the lower form. But then we have the uh, different types of triangles uh, functioning in the echoic lotus, the triad itself, the great uh, symbol of the soul, but even the monad, when the monad is expressed uh, on the monadic plane, it is formed this one in three and three in one in triangle form. And of course, we should be talking so much about uh, this symbolism, but as said, we just mentioned now and we can study then later about the triangles. The, the main idea here is that the con in cancer, it is uh, expressed how the soul is still asleep. It is in its uh, latent state. The matter, the mass of the matter, the square, is in, uh, in uh, rulership, if we may so. The elementary life of the moon is uh, that which is ruling. And then when we think about uh, Capricorn, when this is exactly the same energy, then in Capricorn we see how the soul has been awakened and is affecting this Cancerian energy within us, the elemental life, and uh, is giving impulses and stimulations to that the Christ, uh, the soul consciousness, could be matured and awakened in this lower form. Here we have some interesting images by Jofra. Uh, what, um, again, I hope that we have in some point possibly to study how the, uh, the uh, fourfold personality and the energies of the soul are traveling through our body. And this manifestation work, which is, uh, we can may say that, that it is starting in cancer. Uh, the intuitional energies are uh, invoking us to, to um, actually win our appetites. We remember that cancer is very much related also to stomach. So all of that what we eat is in symbolic ways um, relating us into the matter aspect and the soul which is then bringing the life of the higher lives is then uh, releasing us from the bondage of the matter. So here when we say that I built the lighted house. So this process, uh, when we win the moon uh, in Cancer, or that we start the, the, the path of the moon in one sense, from Cancer to Virgo and then to Aquarius, on the way we learn things that we are not bound anymore to this square life. We learn this real service, which is the uh, very pre-model, uh, pre, uh, the, uh, the very ancient uh, impulse in ca cancer to come and serve. So then we have learned to serve really also the lower life, the sense, 
that we have brought the lighted energy, the triangular formation into the etheric form in the matter, and thus the soul energies which, which we can think about in the, in the opposing sign of Capricorn, and the great light can pour through the whole system. And here we have an, another the image of descending soul energy and then the breaking of the matter, the moon, which is uh, here in one sense. Or so even we could think about this Virgo stage where the Christ, where the Christ is born, the Hermes Trismegistus, where we can, ha where we have this image. Well, we have the same idea here, but I now go a little bit. Uh, quicker because you know the time is running but this uh, is also from your friend I think it is really uh, greatly expressing the, the image of that is called Lemuria and in one sense we can he uh, see here because everything needs perfection so we need also the perfected form uh, but when we think about these um, lower lives, that the form is still not yet perfected in one sense in that stage, that's why we need this um, great journey of the incarnated soul to manifest its, in, itself into the darkened areas. But uh, it is interesting to realize that DK says, in esoteric astrology in um, page 409 that another factor little known is that the moon today is disintegrating and increasingly rapidity and this necessarily affects the earth and produces terrestrial results so th all of these things what are going on on our planet is also caused by the moon which is now um, disintegrating and losing its power, meaning that this very unconscious and, and um, reactive part, it's hard to believe when we think about how the humanity is living at the moment. But anyway, this is going to be passing away. The soul life is taking hold, on hold on our planet. When we think about this huge amount of uh, all kinds of uh, uh, inhabitants that we have on different planes and especially on the astral plane, the watery plane, all of that has to be transformed. And that's we, we can talk, that's why we can talk about Hercules, which is the uh, divine protector of the mankind. He is the prototype, prototype of the soul in incarnation. He was this great Greek hero, but he was the son of uh, Zeus, the greatest god. And uh, uh, he was conceived uh, with a mortal woman, and that's why Hera, the wife of the, uh, Zeus, was uh, jealous about uh, any affair that our wild god Zeus had. And here we see the crab. This is the ancient myth which is telling about when Hercules was fighting with the uh, Hydra. So Hera wanted that the crab would uh, disturb Hercules. But uh, unfortunately the uh, little crab was losing its own life because uh, our hero just banged this little crab to death. So, but after that was coming, that, that Hera was uh, uplifting this uh, faithful little crab on heaven and that's why the whole constellation crab was formed. So there we see the relationship that actually uh, the crab belongs to the myth of uh, Hydra as well. Her, uh, Master DK didn't write that in his uh, Hercules story, but we can think about this um, 
relationship that this matter aspect in us is supposed to um, uh, be tested when we fight with our personality, the hydra, then also the crab, if the crab holds us, we cannot win in this test of hydra. But if the had, uh, crab, the matter, is then the lower part, meaning of that, is uh, on hold under the feet, then we can win the hydra as well. The myth of um, cancer has this beautiful story about how uh, Hercules is running after the hind, which is the hind of uh, um, intuition, and uh, she is needed to be brought into the temple of Apollo, uh, Apollo, who is the sun. So here we have this uh, very, um, how would we say, the many, many lives lasting story, uh, what cancer is teaching on, in us, that we are actually, when we are able to use our lessons, what the moon is uh, uh, teaching us, uh, all of these uh, traps that the moon uh, will hold us. We need intuition in order to uh, go through these tests. So then, in the end, we are able to bring the hind into the temple of Apollo because the hind belongs only into the temple. The intuition cannot be caught. It cannot be trapped. And here we have this beautiful interplay again between the Cancer and the Capricorn. The, the mystery, which, not, which is now what we are going to talk a little bit, is related to the rock and also Shambhala. Now 14 years have been gone from the Shambhala impact. And uh, if you think about last year, then when these 14 years were hitting, you were seeing all of those separatistic ideas that suddenly flew through the uh, different nations. Think about Spain and Ireland uh, and uh, not even uh, <laughs> forget forgetting ISIS, that group which is separating, uh, trying to separate via the terrorism everywhere. So all of that is uh, related to these shambolic energies which are the most important for us to realize, uh, which is facing all of us who are now able to respond to these very high energies of uh, brotherhood are going to be taken maybe in different ways uh, altogether in spiritual life or our life, spiritual life is very much deepened and hastened and, and also challenge, of course, because these increasing energies are just pouring in a much, much more rapid force into our lower system. Uh, it is said that in Shambhala it is kept one special stone, uh, or it is in the uh, guardianship of uh, the highest king. That, uh, that kingship is seen when we study about the symbolism around the world. Here we have the Estonian symbol, uh, the uh, coat of arms, uh, which has these three lions. And the lions are uh, seen all over in the emblems and uh, coat of arms in every country, even though the lion would not exist in the, in the animals themselves. But this is telling about the sun and it is telling about uh, the light. It is uh, telling about the, the relationship which is in every single nation to the highest king. Uh, we will look this um, symbolism later about this trinity 
as we see here, the three lions, and in one sense we can think about these uh, three stages of the sun, which we will study then in Leo. But this uh, ancient tree Quetra is the, uh, also ancient symbol of the Trinity. And always when we have these symbols of the triangle, we are talking about the soul. There we have these three leaves, which actually forms then the four, uh, four different uh, species. Here we see how the soul is uh, functioning in the square. It, it circulates, it, uh, it spirals forward. And here we have this great symbol of the Antakarana building formation. So this three is then now in, this, uh, uh, in the symbolism of the banner of peace. Here we have the Ruris beautiful uh, image of the Saint Sophia, the almighty wisdom. So um, all of these threes, which are related to the soul, they are also related then to Sophia. Here is better image about this um, symbol that we actually find in all places on earth in native uh, traditions as well. These three mystery dots. And we studied that more. Here we have Madonna Oriflama who is carrying this banner or piece. I just now go through this and make the point. But also this we find, this symbol of the uh, like the circle and then the cross, which is the old symbol of the Holy Spirit. And this is also a symbol which is found all over the world. So these two symbols, the three and the four, are also related uh, to the mysteries of the soul hidden in ancient traditions on earth which is very, very interesting for me to, to, uh, to study that, that you, you find these same symbols all over the planet, and that is how we know that we have been one. Uh, the teaching has been uh, with all the nations uh, from the ancient times on. Here we have uh, the image uh, of uh, Ruri, Ruri's gathering, what was that? Uh, it is the delegates of second international conference dedicated to the Ruri Pact uh, Act. And it has been taken August 33, 1933. And here we see this banner of peace hanging around them. And of course, if we would be uh, studying this banner of peace, we could uh, have the whole uh, talk about it. But now we just study the symbolism. It is told also that there is, um, this is Ruri's images, but there is, um, uh, where it was, these rocks. Now I have forgotten. But anyway, there is actually those rocks where you find these uh, mystery dots. And here we have an uh, ancient Celtic symbol where we have already this same idea and this um, uh, eternal movement. We call that the uh, chi, or we can call this Shakti power, or the Holy Spirit, the, the same idea. But this banner of peace is um, hidden, or it is also the same symbol that uh, is uh, used in Buddhism, which is called Kintamani. Uh, this, uh, the stone Kintamani is the, the treasures of the world. It gives the powers for immortals, and uh, it is said that it is uh, fulfilling all the 
uh, wishes that we have. So in that sense, this is the symbol of the soul, the echoic lotus as well. This uh, horse which is coming down from the mountain is called the winged horse who is bringing the messages from the highest king uh, on the top of the mountain. Uh, he can be called Shiva or we call him uh, Sanat Kumara or Rindimbo, however this great one is uh, called, but that is uh, related to the, the bringing forth the light to humankind. It is the uh, Thibetan legend which is uh, carrying the stone of Kintamani every 12 years, and it was interesting that the last year was the year of the horse when this Kintamani was supposed to be brought again to humanity. Rari was talking about this stone. Um, Michael is saying, aha, okay. Michael just said that something happened, but I am again back. I'm hearing that. Um, yes, he, he was talking about that. Um, and uh, here we have one supreme um, being, Ratnasambhava, who, who has... Um, who is called the jewel, the, the Buddha of the jewel, or the one who comes house, who, who is the jewel himself, so the central uh, one. In, in the egoic lotus, the jewel. This box, which, as I told you in the beginning, I, I said that remember this box. So chest, which has this great jewel, which we had here, it said that it was dropping from the sun, or it is said that it was coming, dropping from the space, or it is said that it was coming from the stars. It is said also that it was coming from Orion. It has this um, uh, Kintamani, which is coming from the Mani, which means pearl, and Kinta means desire or love. So it is uh, the jewel which is given to us which symbol is the three dots, is given to us to, to come back. Uh, it is also like, um, said that it was in the head of Makara, so that it was on the fish uh, king or dragon king of the sea, or it has been the eye of the dragon king, or it is the relics of the Buddha. So in that symbolism of the three is related uh, interesting things which are in the chest and uh, cancer is ruling the chest. And that is, we have the Pandora's chest or box here in our body. So whenever the energies of the cancer are available. Even though the cancer is very uh, v weak and fake constellation, and it indicates about that it's difficult for us to actually grasp the energies of a cancer in its highest sense. But it is very mystery sign, it's very soul sign, and when we have these times of the cancer, it is, um, uh, it relates us to Christ. And here we have, again, this, uh, this is actually Memling's very um, talking image. And this uh, is the, the war, how it is called in, um, in the Bible. Uh, we are asked to 
dress up into the war armor. And there are seven uh, jewels that are protecting us. And if you study, there are those three uh, main jewels, and there are the four. And then we have the image of the Christ, which is the uh, giving the oath, or the one who knows, the one who brings the teaching, the one who has the rulership over this Kintamani expression. So uh, again, I want to ask to contemplate about this, where, what is the area that cancer rules and how there there is the connection for us to find the emblem of the Christ. We can even call this the, that the cancer holds for us the emblem of the Christ. Uh, so the, the great effort towards alignment is going on and when the individual aspirant can meditate then the way that his voice can reach the real new group of world service, the great Nirmanikayas. This time of cancer gives us the possibility if we really work uh, consciously together, it is always then related to meditative work. We have the possibility to reach the, the real groups, uh, group members of the, this great group of the new group of world servers, which is coming into action. So when this group is able to walk out of the tomb of matter into the square of service and bring the light, then also those great ones can hear our call, our uh, wish, our desire, then these, uh, the kintamani on our chest can be activated and, and we are able to radiate this uh, triangular formation through our etheric body. So again, back to these 14 years which is set by decay, which the great energies needs before they descend upon the physical plane. We have these very channel challenging years still coming because we have these great oppositions. We have uh, three we have had already. We have uh, uh, three serious Pluto oppositions. Sirius is found in Cancer, that's why it's important for us to realize it. And then we have Sirius, Vega, Pluto, five oppositions. Two of them have been passed. One of those where the Sirius Pluto has been passing. And now look, on the 5th of July is coming, so it is the next Sunday, at least here in Europe. Uh, it is coming the second time uh, this um, when Sirius and Pluto are opposing and then next um, January is going to be the, uh, when the Sirius, Vega and Pluto are opposing and then uh, Sirius and Pluto again on December. So that these are very powerful energies. They are bringing these um, triangles of uh, force into action. We have the shambolic impact energies affecting the nations. We have the moon condition when we were thinking about that. DK is pointing out that we have um, our planetary um, focus when we think about the polar star is on the way of shifting. We have uh, all kinds of um, cycles ending and starting. Uh, the, the, the era of the forerunners are ending in 10 years. 
the great conclave your focus upon the coming 2025. We try all to do our best using these energies, becoming conscious in the square. And let us uh, take that what is the highest symbolism of the square. It is the plane of service, the place of service. So we have only fantastic things ahead of us, meaning that it is really challenging. So I just go put that back. And um, uh, I think that now we would have, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, a few minutes or questions. So how much do we have time for questions now? If we have about 15 minutes meditation, and then uh, do we have then uh, 20 minutes? Yeah. Well, um, yeah, I suggest if we could now open the floor for the questions and the comments, and we would have about 15 minutes of meditation and 15 minutes of questions. Is that right. Clear? Yes, it is okay yeah. for me. <laughs> if uh, there is. <laughs> so, uh, in order to. If there are, I'm sure there will be. Uh, at least I have already one question. Uh, so just a technical uh, uh, comment that, uh, and as you notice that everyone is now muted, uh, but Tuya, now I'm talking, uh, but for technical reasons everyone is muted, uh, but if you want to say something, uh, share your thoughts, impressions, or ask a question, please use the function of raise your uh, hand button on the control panel and um, I will unmute you and you will be able to speak. Otherwise, you can write your um, questions and comments in the question section of your control panel. But it's always better to hear your voice, so please do that. And while people are um, getting ready for that, I want to ask you to, uh, uh, to tell about the uh, Triangles Initiative, which you mentioned briefly at the beginning of your presentation, and which I think is very, very important one, and uh, especially in this time that you described this right. time of, uh, big uh, crisis, that's one of the techniques that I think is one of the most powerful techniques that DK gave us uh, in terms of practical work and very simple work that we can do. So can you please tell about the right. Because I was thinking I'm going to put these ideas in the meditation because this is the only way how we can function on Earth using the triangles. That is how the powers are generated. We are bringing forth the soul life and that is because it is based upon meditation. And the meditation is our means how we are bringing the Christ into the humanity, how we are bringing the Christ into our uh, everyday life, how the life is uplifted, how we are opening the both way the gates uh, to to manifestation, heaven to earth, and also out of the incarnation. We need uh, triangular work, and all of these powers. When we think about the um, the square. It's, in one sense, it is symbolism, but it is, in one sense, also a very, very concrete thing uh, that there is the formation in our etheric system is uh, square-like. And in triangular work, when we meditate together, we are able to m change the etheric formation according to the uh, soul life the prana that we start to take from the sun. We first we take the prana directly uh, that it has been circul it starts from the sun, it circulates in the aura of the planet and we take from that our inner uh, life. It's, it is somewhat um, transmuted to our system but our uh, purpose is to actually start to take directly prana from the sun. And that comes then in the transfiguration, initiation, in the third decree. But uh, already when we work with the triangular work in that sense, consciously and uh, um, rhythmically, it starts to build up this whole system in our etheric body 
because it has to be made, the tool has to be made that we can use the energies, the triangle energies of the force from the sun. Is the uh, okay, Michael wants to say something. Did you want to say something, Michael? Yes, please. <clears throat> okay, just, um, just uh, the we know that the Lucis Trust has been conducting this triangles work for many, many decades, and we're very grateful for all they do. But many of our esoteric groups need to do this now because of the state of emergency that we're in. Uh, so, if you wish to register a triangle. Uh, with us, what would be the email address uh, to your uh, global meditations? Uh, uh, okay, I was putting my uh, yes. Uh, actually, it is global meditations. Or global triangles. Oh, sorry. sorry. Yes, global yeah, triangles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. global triangles at gmail dot com. So you can, you know, you you can not register. You can register. The important thing is that at this time of human crisis and the last 10 years of the era of the forerunner, that uh, we intensify our triangles work, and we're trying to uh, offer that opportunity here as well. Thank you. Thank you for this project. And uh, we, in the 2025 initiative, when we were uh, meditating in the beginning of this year about the uh, themes that we would like to bring uh, to the focus of the group meditation. The work of the triangles uh, was one of the themes that came vividly and it was the strong impressions about the importance of this work and then we were really uh, happy to see when the uh, announcement came through the Moria Federation mailing list about this project of the triangles and it just meant for us that we are really in sync and that's really important. And so if you don't do this uh, triangles yet, so please uh, form a triangle. It's a very simple exercise with two other people with whom you feel connected and we have an agreement to do that and just every day link with them with the energy of light and love and uh, really a great invocation. Right. As simple as that. That's right. And and the, uh, when we think about practically about, um, uh, uh, I, I was thinking that I'm going to talk in these meditations, these uh, points that um, that are in our focus in one sense because when we think about this axis of Cancer Capricorn, we find Sirius at the moment in uh, Cancer. And then we have opposing Sirius, the great star of Vega. So these two great powers are um, activated by Pluto, who, who, who is going through now uh, through uh, Capricorn. Uh, earlier, when I was talking, was it one year ago, when did I talk <laughs> about the Pluto in Capricorn? Um, I was uh, emphasizing and t um, trying to um, get us to understand that the Pluto is not only that kind of um, um, point that we we uh, relate that in astrology uh, about these um, transformations. It is about that, but it is also uh, this uh, how the soul is uh, working through the space in that sense that when we are able to really align with that um, functioning point at the moment because it, Pluto is in Capricorn which is already the door to hierarchy which is the door out of the incarnation it means that whether we understand or we do if we do we can always work consciously now with those energies that were looked uh, and pointed out by old Egyptians. They were always studying Pluto because it was the Anubis dog. And uh, the dog is the one 
who is going through the darkness and uh, and smells the way you know that the the smell is the highest sense uh, we are ending up to the uh, highest quality on the atmic plane which is said all knowledge and that is smell that is directing us to gain that all knowledge for Egyptians the Pluto was uh, in two parts. First it was the black Pluto uh, or Anubis and then uh, it was the white Anubis. Meaning that uh, the first in the process there appears this black one which is connected to Sirius B and it is giving us um, eyes uh, to see, meaning that we are getting this intuition, intuitions and messages from our own soul, how we, we should be, um, what kind of things we should be doing uh, to gain more soul life. And then comes, uh, in later in the process, comes the white Anubis, which is already related to Sirius A, which is about sitting on the throne. So uh, uh, the first part is taking us in into the initiatory process. So whole humanity is absolutely in the big initiatory process. And now when we had the cancer energies, and this, uh, I was so fascinating to find these, um, the, the relationships about the, the placement of the body uh, in that much more deeper sense that I have ever, ever found before, that how the cancer actually holds us secrets for this um, uh, opening to the, 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 to the energies of the Christ in us uh, and these Pandoras, even though it is said the Pandora's chest was uh, some kind of uh, horrors, but no, it is about the treasures. But these treasures are the, the only treasures then when the soul is holding them. Otherwise they turn the horrors for the human. For in the square they are only horrors and in the triangle they become the treasures. So this whole process is going on and whenever we have this activated, this connection from Pluto to Sirius and the Cancer energies for us this and for the forerunner time, we are uh, taken in into the practical terms on our earthly lives to do something. And the triangle of work is that what we, every one of us, we can do. And when these energies are, we want to um, create the possibility for us to really stand in mass intent, as it is said. And also it is um, said by Alize Bailey uh, that uh, he, she was mentioning that if 100,000 triangles, conscious triangles would be functioning on earth, the whole turn can be done on earth in one night. We can take these symbolic ways or we can take very concrete ways and uh, we are intending to take very concrete ways that understanding what is now happening what kinds of things are happening and because the energies are moving via the focal focus points and all of those points are focusing now in our lives to these uh, when Sirius, Sirius, Pluto are working together because they were so important indicators for initiation for Egyptians uh, and they are the factors uh, studying DK as well. And then when we have the Sirius, Vega and Pluto, uh, Vega which is related to incantations which is uh, announcing things, the, the announcing uh, the uh, mantras as we say the great invocation, all of that is asked by DK to be done 
in order to to bring forth the reappearance and uh, we all are workers for that for reappearance all this work is now calling us to do all we can did I talk too long? Michael is looking to me the, the way that I did <laughs> <laughs> okay we we can have some questions if there are any they are very on point <laughs> Uh, there, there is a thank you note from Isabel Kung. Thank you to the uh, most enlightening. And the question from Catherine Svensson: uh, Will we announce the upcoming webinar for serious Pluto position? Thank you. Right. So, can can you tell about how people could join that? And can you tell about the online work that you and Michael are doing? Because that's very uh, important work and. I'm happy you're doing what you're doing. So can you tell so, us how people could join not only this uh, serious Pluto opposition webinar, but uh, all other of your webinars? In the end, I'm going to have my uh, email address there. And you have also, mm -hmm. such. I think you have our addresses, don't you? Yes. Yep. Uh, yes. So I will leave th this um, my email address and uh, just send now there and uh, we will direct them to the correct places from that because I don't have any other things written but, mm -hmm. but yes, if, can you mention when they're going to happen? the, the okay. coming the okay coming well coming. okay friends you know um, I, I don't have the excuse that mercury is retrograde uh, <laughs> when you're calculating these oppositions you have it's, it's fairly complex astronomically and I consulted with uh, my friend, very fine astrologer, Nicholas Nilan, and he basically, we, we confirmed that the 4 o'clock in the morning time that we had offered for the July 5th uh, is about seven hours too early for the exact conjunction. It's on the right day, of course. So w what Tui and I figure is that we will start at uh, approximately 1 o'clock in the afternoon universal time on July 5th and then we'll we'll send to Alexander the exact data there and it's a broadcast so uh, as many people as want to come there's no limitation and we can get that uh, to you by Alexander and it would be at 1 uh, p.m. Uh, on the, um, the 5th of July and that would be here in, in Finland at 4 p.m. so We'll, we'll have this for you, and it will be a, a meditation, of course, focusing uh, uh, on the serious Pluto opposition, and uh, it will be with music and uh, also with images, and you will lead that. And well, uh, maybe we will then... This is the thing, because we are going to have a, a lot of going on on that day. So we just... Um, Sent information. We'll send to, Ale to Alexander, yeah, and he can get it to you, and he can get it to you. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Right, and because now we are really starting to work with these uh, energies, uh, if you think about what just happened about these terrorist attacks, so the same way when these energies are affecting us, under uh, we are all under very very intense energies. You see everywhere people are breaking, they, they uh, or maybe I said that we or me can, <laughs> cannot always respond to these um, intense energies. We, we have to remind ourselves uh, and that's why um, somehow strengthen our work at the moment, uh, become more and more active because this is what masters are expecting from us that we are we are active at the moment these energies must be distributed and we are those points via which these energies are descending so in that sense uh, we we start to drum now about our event our biggest event will be then on the 15th of november 2016 when there is this, uh, the last Sirius Vega Pluto uh, opposition and conjunction. 
uh, and that will be a big event. So let us start to use our bush radio and every single way that we can collect these 100,000 triangles. <laughs> but and actually, talking, talking about the distribution, uh, it's not just us individually, but us as a triangle, because the triangle is the, the figure of distribution of energy. So that's that's right. another reason why the triangles are important. Right. And that's why if we don't have anybody uh, concretely, uh, we can always imagine this triangle within us, the, the, the soul and then uh, our master, or, or in a, inwardly. But uh, keeping this, this in mind that we need the triangle work, if you remember this um, ancient symbol, it tells about how the energies are built up and poured down the same same uh, by the same law, but there was. I see there is Martin Vivek, who has the hand up. Aha. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, oh yes. Uh, so I will unmute Martin. Yes. Hi. Yes, uh, Martin. Hi. Uh, thank Hello. You very, thank you very much to you. I just wanted you to comment briefly on that. You kind of gave a progression from Cancer to Virgo to Aquarius. I know that Cancer represents what BK calls the embryonic human. Virgo repre represents the embryonic Christ. And right. Aquarius lifts up the burden of Virgo. Could you comment a little bit about that progression? Because we're right. The reason we're doing this triangle's work is we are basically moving into Aquarius and we need that's part of the building the pathway. So could you just talk about that progression from Cancer to Virgo to Aquarius very briefly? Uh, right. I, I hope that I can be brief. <laughs> so when we think about these uh, lower energies, and what, which represents in cancer this, uh, the, the matter which holds us, and then in uh, um, Virgo we are breaking through the Christ is born, and then the world server in Aquarius is born. So uh, 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 moon is hiding, it's not the energy which is uh, working in us in that sense that it is the moon, it is hiding, veiling, uh, made, namely the Neptune or Vulcan, but anyway when we are moving through these energies from Cancer to Virgo and to Aquarius, this is our goal, that we become those that we are the center of the life which is pouring from our head. We are the life givers that the others can drink from us. In, in, in um, Virgo, we nurture the Christ life. When we think concretely about that, that um, uh, we, we are uh, in the energies of cancer, we are um, moved by the masses. We are not so conscious. In Virgo, when the Virgo starts to work us, we uh, start to take care of this purification. We start to understand or, uh, or uh, focus upon what do we eat, in what kind of surroundings we are living in. We, we try to make room for the great, uh, to the great labor of birthing the Christ. And then in uh, uh, Aquarius, we should be already those who can give now from ourselves everything what the soul is, that the others can drink the, the life of life, the waters of life in us. Hopefully that said something. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. So shall we now move into the, uh, in the meditation? Yes. Okay. Yes, please. So, dearest friends, thank you so much for your participation, and let us now uh, just continue it in that beautiful field that Sasha was creating for all of us, and um, maybe we sound inwardly our great mantra of Om in silence. And let us um, visualize these three, the symbol of the three dots, 
the Kintamani on our chest. Reminding us how we have come forth as a great group, bringing the soul into the lower lives, how we came to serve. Those who know and who are already in the triangle, align with your triangles. Imagine this great sky with all of the great divine beings. Imagine that you are under the constellation of Cancer, which is pouring out the beautiful energies there is one triangle what we can think about the Pleiades and Cancer and Venus being for us now the prototype how we also are like constellations and our triangle represents these energies the sacredness on earth align if you are in any triangle work align with that work of your line and also let us imagine how the triangle work is now really strengthened and going to be stimulated that we all are now really ready for the last 10 years to make a huge effort effort together for hierarchy and for the Christ to bring the living triangular energetic web on earth sending through that the spiritual light and saying Keywords of uh, cancer, I build the lighted house and there in dwell. Seeing that this lighted house is this triangular work on earth. Breathe forth the flow of love and goodwill through your triangle, triangles, and through the global triangle work.
visualize the great triangle order which is formed by humanity, hierarchy and Shambhala. And humanity now having increasingly better relationship with the hierarchy. DK mentioned that the problem is not with the Shambhala and humanity, it is the between humanity and hierarchy. Imagine all of us standing in mass intent within the will to good. And let our invocation be heard on high. May our meditation be recognized by the great Nirmanakayas, the great contemplatives. Let us sound the great invocation. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love, within the heart of God. Let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center, which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Visualize the earth as a sacred planet and humanity redeemed. Let us sustain the circulation of love and light flowing through the triangle, our triangle or triangles and throughout the network of triangles with gratitude we hold this idea of the triangles and the great last years of the forerunners in our minds when we prepare our time to the full moon and also to that again very very important important moment on coming Sunday 
Thank you very much for all of you. Be blessed and work well. Let us build the lighted house on earth. Thank you very much. And thank you everyone for joining today and let's keep our connectedness and our focus in the coming days of the full moon and the coming, or I would rather say, ongoing opposition on Sirius and Pluto. And in the chat window, uh, I've posted two years address and uh, on our website, 2025initiative.org, along with the recording of today's webinar, we will uh, post information about the coming webinars organized by Moria Federation, and uh, so you will be able to join them. Um, and also I want to announce our coming webinars of the 2025 initiative. Uh, on July 19th, we're going to have the New Moon webinar uh, in support of the Cyclic Meditation Project. and. Uh, we will meditate together on the new uh, seed thought of the new uh, month cycle and we will meditate on Leo uh, seed thought. And also the coming Leo Solar Festival webinar is going to be on July 31st and it's going to be with Juline Dubois uh, from the United States of America and the topic will be Spiritual Will, the Lion's Roar. Thank you again, friends. Much love and light. <laughs>